video you're about to watch is Oliver's first time feeling weight against him in the harness where I've actually asked him to pull a load and where he's going to have to hear something behind him dragging. And, um, you know, it's Oliver, so I'll let you find out if he did a good job or not. <laughs> but this is several weeks later and um, while we're editing it, and I wanted to go over a few things before we get into the content. There has been a vocal minority of negative comments about training Oliver to do a job or to work. And um, there has been a vocal minority of comments that are negative about putting him in a harness instead of just riding him. And there's been a vocal minority of comments, negative comments, this is, about blinders on a, on a harness. So I just wanted to give my take on all those things and kind of what we found out. So when we did first put the bridle with blinders on, um, he did react to them and did spook like when you would come up from behind the blinders. But it's something new to a two-year-old horse. That's what learning is. Just because he reacted one time doesn't mean that he doesn't get used to it. Now this is a couple weeks later, he's completely used to them. And blinders, why I think so many people are getting triggered by the blinders is because it's a very negative sounding term, like you're blinding a horse. So like if you would call them comfort flaps or <laughs> mental anguish easing flaps or something like that, or butterfly wings, you know, then it would sound all flowery and fluffy and people would have no problem with it. But since it's a negative sounding name, I think they, uh, are thinking really negative connotations about them. But think of it like this. Just stand there and look and see what you can see. You, us as predators can see the field of view. The blinkers on the, on, the, on the harness or the bridle is giving a horse a human's field of view. So it can still see everything you could see. Like that's what he's seeing is basically how a human sees. A horse's eyes as prey animal are set on the side of its head and it can see 160 degrees on both sides. So it can almost see its butt or it probably can see its hip, just not its tail on both sides of it and all of this that you're not seeing, okay? So when I'm way behind him in a carriage, watch what happens when I say, good boy, good boy, Oliver. Oh, you turn and look at me and look for a treat. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, while I'm talking to him, sitting in a seat behind him, every time I'd talk to him, he would turn his head and look at me if he didn't have the blinders on. Oop. Plus, I don't, I've said good boy two times and not given him a treat. Oh, now is that what that was? Yeah, now he's <laughs> like, come on, you said good boy, give me a treat. I'm sorry, bud, I'll get you a treat here in a little bit. That's funny. Yeah, he knows what good boy means, it means treat. So anyway, that's one of the uses for blinders. Another one is, it looks traditional and looks good when you're using a harness setup. And if we were gonna show him, he would have them on. So just learn from the get-go. Thirdly, one of the jobs, I really take a lot of pride and I'm excited to actually use him for things on the farm. One of the things I'm gonna do is be cutting firewood for my dad and hauling it to him. And all the sticks and even going through fields with grass and stuff, when you're in a harness and you're swinging a load, you want his eyes to be protected from those poke hazards. Blinders aren't bad, they aren't cruel. Um, the horse doesn't care about them. It's just like anything else. It took him two or three times to get used to them. Now he's completely used to them. The other thing is with the harness, um, I think it's people kind of anthropomorphizing, which means putting a horse into a human's position and thinking of them like some type of sick, twisted thing that a human would be in a harness for, and it's not. This animal was bred, designed, and structured all for harness work for their whole history. And just like those Pyrenees dogs stay with the sheep, you can see one, if, if the would zoom Bears in, you see her up standing there. up there on the hill, she stays with those sheep 24 seven not because of the fence. She can get out of a fence. Matter of fact, the backside of that ain't even fenced. She stays with him because it's in her breeding. That's what's in his breeding is harness work. 
So it's designed for them to have a healthy mind on a horse. They have to have leadership. There's no way for me to be his leader if he's not doing a, not part of a team with me. And to be part of a team with me, he's got to have a job. To have a fulfilled life, don't you, Paul? He's got to have a, a job. So if you like what we're doing and you want to support us, um, keep watching the videos. If you really have no problem with us and want to be just part of the support group and not part of the critic group, you can join his Patreon page. The link's in the description. And if you do have negative comments and you don't believe what I've said, go ahead and put them in the comments and I'll respond to them as needed. <laughs> but here goes the video and I think you'll like what you get to see. Okay, wait. Are you going to still train him to ride? Yes, but I'm waiting for his strength to really build. I'm going to, I'm going to get him beefed up pulling and then I'm going to start riding him. Okay. Okay, hi everybody. This is the fourth lesson with Oliver and it'll be the first time with any weight against the harness or the, or the tugs as they call it. This is a sled I've had for years. I've trained full grown horses to pull it. It's just a six by six post cut off at an angle and I've got a bench strapped to it. I won't be sitting on the bench today. It's just gonna be the, the weight of the sled alone. And he hasn't seen it yet, so I'm trying to get him to look at it. And then I'm going to let him see it and hear it before we go. Let's see if I can do it like this. And I'm going to start my GoPro. Okay. And hopefully he just doesn't react at all to it. Come on, bud. Come on. Come on, Oliver. Oh, he's wanting to stop at the grain barrel. But I'm hungry. I haven't ate in 20 minutes. Here's a good boy, Stan. Yeah. Come on. Let him get a look at that. Okay, ho. Oh. Come here, little boy. Okay. Whoa. Stand there. Come stand in front of him for me. Stand there, bud. I'm hoping for good things, but I don't really know what to expect. I've got this chain has a big loop, kind of for a safety factor. Okay, back up, bud. Get clear in case he gets scared and spooks. Of course, he's never spooked before. Anytime you're nervous, people with horses. Breathe deep and take a second and say a little prayer. Oliver, God gave me dominion over you. Let your will fall right in line with my will in Jesus' name. Be calm. Okay, we're just gonna take a few steps and stop. Walk, slow, go, now. Okay, now, whoa, whoa, good boy. Easy, you're okay. See? That's what it's all about, bud. Okay? You know I'm not going to let nothing bad happen to you. Okay? Now you be calm. You understand? Walk. Good boy. Walk. Good boy. You're okay. Oh. You're okay. Now, ho, oh, stand there. See, you're fine. This is the very first time we give you the true blue things here at Homestead Horsemanship, not the polished version, huh, bud? Can we be a little better this time? Can we walk? Walk, bud. You're okay. You're okay, walk. Good boy. And just like that, in real time, the fear has left him and he's already becoming accustomed to feeling the weight in the tugs. He really is a good boy. Easy. Whoa. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and 
hook the lines up to him and I think I'm safer behind him than I am in front of him, tell you the truth. Walk, come by, walk, come by, come by. Good boy, good boy. You're okay, you're okay. Walk, that's a good boy. Walk. What a good boy. Walk. Walk up. Walk up, Oliver. Walk. Good boy. Walk. You're okay. You're okay, buddy. Come by. You're okay. Come by. There. That's a good boy. Walk. Taking a little break. He's getting it, he's coming along. Starting and stopping is usually the hard part. But, oh, walk up. Walk. Good boy. Let me come up and see you, huh, bud? You're okay. Hey, what a good boy. Is this stressful? You're over it now. You're old hat now, isn't it? Walk up. Hat, walk. Good boy. You're a good boy. I'm gonna go through a creek crossing where it makes a little more noise. See what he does. Good boy, Oliver. Walk up. Walk up. Good boy. He's really calmed down about this pretty quickly. Walk. Walk. Walk up. Walk. Oh, no. good boy, easy, come by, come by, come by, good boy. That was his first time ever experiencing weight in the heart, who, in the harness, and he did great. He was scared at first, but that's okay. He, by the time we were done, he was completely chill with it. And that's what I wanted. We'll do that three times and then I'll start sitting on that harness or on that sled. 
Uh, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button, especially the subscribe button because we're only 10,000 away from the 100,000. I want to get there quick. So that would really help. We appreciate it and God bless. This is just a few lessons later and you can see the progress he's made already. Come now on. I'm sitting in the chair. Get up. I'm real proud of him here because a two-year-old stallion you could usually not ride next to a filly and a gelding playing in the arena and Oliver doesn't let anything bother him or take his mind off the task. Get up. Now that I'm working him regularly, we had to get him shod and there's a video coming out soon on that. It was very interesting and I found a really awesome horseshoer, so stay tuned.